Well, welcome to the latest edition of TV on the Net. I'm your host, Tom Vartanian. Today's show brought to you by AmeriCue Credit Union for every day or for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By riding a Creek Farm and Marathon, all natural pasture-raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance to Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit and dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carryouts and catering for some events. Check them out online at Riley'sCafe.com or call 607-849-6434. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607 756 849 or check them out online at isofmerker.com or on their Facebook page. By Arnold's Flower Shop, your premier wedding florist at 19 West Main Street in Dryden. For flowers for your wedding or any occasion, call 607-844-8601 or order online at arnoldsflowershop.com. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland. Open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck coming in the spring of 2022. And by Crop Growers LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact Casey Slade at 607-591-2460 for more information. Well, today it's our College Spotlight edition once again, and we head back to, uh, for a second week in a row, we go back to Tompkins Cortland Community College. And it's the start of the basketball season uh, just the other night, and uh, we're going to talk with the uh, women's head basketball coach, uh, David Stevenson. It's, it's kind of fun. He actually has some, some of the same similar background I had. I started my career in the... Trumansburg. Well, he graduated from Trumansburg just a few years after I uh, start. You know, after I did down in Afton in '75. He's just a few years after me, but uh, he's been here. And not only has he been the basketball coach for the last, you know, six seasons, but he's also been. I know I recognize the name from some other coaching runs here at the college too. You and Mick McDaniel, I think, have had your uh, footprint on several sports here over the years. But uh, Dave, welcome. Well, glad to be here. Glad to be here. Like we said, it's been an interesting journey. Journey, I guess. I asked the first thing I asked. I didn't know if the name it always had always sounded familiar to me, and now I found out we probably crossed paths in softball sometime back in the <laughs> '80s when I was playing softball down in Ithaca. But uh, yeah, we both looked a lot a lot younger back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and uh, moved a little bit quicker, and uh, you know, a uh, little slimmer. <laughs> Two kids will grade grade me up quite a bit. So, <laughs> two daughters, no less. Um, but talk, let's talk a little bit about, like I said, that you started, you know, you played you, you play sports and uh, at Trumansburg and stuff. What, what was it like? Uh, I got to see Trumansburg sports in the mid-80s and then again in the 90s and have kind of followed. So I know some of the, the legend, legendary coaches that were there at the time, West Somerville, uh, Tom Major, uh, 
Rick Smith, Chris Bond, um, the list goes on and on there, Joel Wilson, uh, Jack Reed. But uh, what was it like uh, growing up and playing uh, sports at Trumansburg High School back in the 70s? Well, I'll tell you, um, it's something that I uh, frequently look back on. Um, it was uh, an amazing experience. All, all the coaches that you just mentioned, um, uh, nothing but the utmost respect for. Um, Wes Somerville, a legend. Jack Reed, I used to love the way he got got after his players and and made them uh, you know better every day. Um, I actually played in high school with Joel Wilson, um, so uh, him and I were uh, good friends when we were growing up. And uh, you know, Coach Smith, um, and then Chris Bond. Uh, enough said about that. That that gentleman uh just just an awesome awesome person and he actually put up with me in physics class so that was uh something that uh wasn't always enjoyable i'm sure but uh i had nothing but uh total respect for that man also as far as sports uh i know baseball turned out being being your sport who was the baseball coach back in those days uh del borden del borden um you know, um, there's another one uh, I, I look back with uh, fond memories. Um, actually, a story I like to tell in my baseball career, I was an outfielder um, and a pitcher. Um, played a little first base from time to time, but uh, we were going uh, to play a, a, a game at the end of the year that uh, we really needed uh, to win, and uh, I was slated to pitch, and uh, I was a lefty, and Coach Borden had a left-handed catcher's mitt. And he came to me and he said, hey, I'd really like to start Jeff Dumont today. Um, you know, how do you feel about that? I looked at him and I said, coach, I got no problem with that as long as you let me catch. So he threw me the left-handed catcher's mitt and threw me behind the plate for the game. And uh, I'll remember that forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from Trumersburg, where you head off to, you know, for college and stuff? Uh, I graduated here from Tompkins, Cortland. I uh, spent some time at Mansfield State. And uh, played a little baseball in college, and uh, and then moved on from there. So what 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 was the path that kind of brought you full circle? Like we say, you came back around the you know and started coaching here at TC three. Um, I actually was working in the campus safety division here. Um, I hadn't coached in a while. Um, I struck up conversations with uh, John Pianowski, who was the head men's basketball coach here back in the day. And uh, him and I started talking philosophy, started talking about uh, how we went about our business and, uh, and what we saw in the building process here at Tompkins Cortland as far as men's basketball. And uh, he asked me to join his staff here, uh, talked to my family, and uh, they said, yeah, why don't you get back into it? And uh, jumped back in and uh, started with the men's team as an assistant in 2003-04, I believe. And... Uh, Coached uh, the after Coach Pianowski left, coached the men's for a number of years, and uh, then decided uh, at some point that I'd like to uh, try to build the women's program. And as we said, it uh, started the season got underway uh, just the other night. They uh, 64-52 was the final score, but really it was still a two to four point game with about four and a half minutes to go. It was close to just. The team had two cold streaks. One was in the first half after you got a nice lead. The, the, the team just went cold from the field. I think it seemed like for seven minutes or more maybe. But uh, and then just kind of late in the game, the uh, shots just didn't fall at that time again. But uh, like you say, it's a, it's a small team, only uh, seven, I believe, seven players on the team. And uh, they're all first-year players. So, I mean, so it's a, it's a building process this year for what you've got to work with. But, uh, you know, what were some of your impressions of that, you know, first game? Well, as far as the first game goes, um, I was nothing but impressed. Um, our effort, for the most part, was there. Um, we did run out of gas. We did go through spurts, like you said, where we couldn't score the basketball. Um, we're learning on the defensive end of the floor. But uh, what what I take from it is uh, the effort was there. When you're limited in the number of bodies you have um, after all this craziness with the last couple of years, um, you know, I am super excited about who we do have. And uh, I saw more than a handful of things that I believe we're going to get better at. So uh, I, I think we'll be all right. Uh, conditioning, we uh, need to work on a little bit defensive end of the floor a couple of philosophies um some positioning stuff offensively you know 
It's been my experience. Offense tends to take care of itself. The spurts we went through last night that you referred to, um, I were just we ran out of gas a little bit. Yep. And it's a, it's, a, it's a decided. I, I I call it, it's it's tough. It's kind of you know when you look at the mix up. I call it more of a kind of a finger leaks feel because you've got a player from Ithaca, two teammates from Moravia. Of course, the uh, all you know one of the all-time best scorers up at uh, McGraw's here now, Chris Wilbur, um, uh, Adriana Royce from some uh, very good Newfield teams over the past few years, and uh, then you also got another uh, Morgan Gunn who did you know played part on some successful teams over at Groton over the past few years, and then uh, throw in uh, you know a, 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 I don't know I don't not really exchange students anymore because that's certainly the couch, but from uh, Singapore and uh, the Oldman. So I mean it's a uh, it's a, a nice mix, but it's a local mix, which you know kind of should you know appeal to fans to come watch. It's a lot of you know kid, you know young women now that they grew up watching in high schools and stuff. Well, that's the thing. Um, you know, you talk about the girl from Singapore. In, you know, in past years, we've had uh, you know people from all over. Um, you know, from as far away as Florida. Uh, you know, um, we we do recruit outside the area. But you and I spoke at the very beginning about the fact that I'm from Trumansburg, and I am a super big fan of the local talent. And, uh, you know, part of the building process, we were where we were on our way, and then, you know, the last couple of years hit and kind of put us back, and we're, we're building to, uh, towards it again. Um, teams in the past that have been very successful um, have a mixture of outside the county and inside the county and uh like i said uh to to put a team of just local players on the floor and win a championship would be like my dream season um i'm, I'm a big fan of the local talent um sometimes i don't know if the local talent realizes what a jewel they actually have here on the hill and a and a good place to start um their college career but uh, we'll keep getting out there, and we'll keep talking to folks. And uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of the local player. Has it gotten any harder? Like you said, obviously the pandemic has, you know, raised a lot of different issues. I mean, it led to 90 member women's soccer team this fall, which was, uh, you know, a surprise of some of the successes they have had recently. But kind of one of the things in the pandemic era, where we call it the pandemic era, I guess. Now we're into the year two of it, uh, almost the year three coming up. Um, where the SUNY schools kind of threw out some SATs, and so some kids are jumping on the fact, well, why should I worry about going to a two-year school when I can jump right into a four-year school now and do that? Whereas I always thought TC3 in any community college is, is a good fit because if your grades aren't quite that good and you want to work on getting your grades up and, and move on, you know, your, your last couple of years, you know, that, this community college atmosphere was the way to do it. And if you were an athlete, it was a good way to definitely be on the floor at this time instead of you know maybe going to a four-year institute and maybe as a freshman you might see playing time or they might have a jv team they may not have a jv team so it, to me it, you know tc3 and I'll, I'll say this because i used to graduating in 78 from trumansburg you remember you know the facilities you've got now these you know very nice facilities that have been here you know quite a few years now you know with behind mick mcdaniel the ad and everybody and your your assistant ad actually too so it's another one of your titles here but uh the growth of the facilities here, but you can remember back trying to talk to recruits and uh, take them, uh, taking them to the pit <laughs> to watch, watch basketball games with the classrooms all up above. And uh, whenever a class break was, it, you know, you kids could start getting this ring of smoke above the court and everything. But uh, but you remember those days, so I mean, so it's got to be a nice, you know, factor that you, these nice facilities, you know, and of course the fitness centers right across there and the field houses just down the hall here. But it's to recruit. And, you know, for a community college to show these kind of facilities now, it's got to be a big help in the long run. It is. And, and you know, and that's where the, the, the pandemic break, as I refer to it, um, kind of hurt us a little bit. We, we weren't able to bring students on campus to show them what. And, you know, we have virtual tours that are on our Web page, but it doesn't quite give you the feel of actually what's going on. Um, you referred to the pit. That's actually when I started. Um, 
uh, playing in the pit. It was a wonderful place to play when you were winning. It was not a fun place to play when you were losing or you had practice because everything was open to the public. And uh, but some some fond memories over there also. Um, back to back to one of your points. Uh, uh, you said you know it used to be that the fact that um, students would come here to get their grades up to go to the four year. Yes, the four years have lowered their standards, but what we're finding is. Um, and I hope the trend continues is um, it's not just a place to come to get your grades up anymore. It's a place to come to get a degree, um, uh, especially if you're not quite sure what you want to do. Um, and it's, uh, you know, you, you mentioned about going to the four year, you know, you come here for those first two years, you're going to play. You go to a four-year school, you know you've been around long enough. You you might uh, be number fifteen on the end of the bench and not see much time other than practice time. So it is a time, um, you know. In my years here, we've transferred on a number of players, um, but like you pointed out, the uh, four-year schools have lowered their standards a little bit, and you can't, you know, you can't uh, fault somebody for wanting to jump right into a four-year institution. But uh, we just got to keep putting out what a, what an opportunity and a, what a you know a good place this is to be and uh, you know things go in cycles. We'll be back. Yeah, well, you know, like we say too, sometimes you know kids came here and didn't know what they wanted to major and I, I, I can attest to that. I ended up going to your next opponent actually uh, coming up on Tuesday night. They're playing Herkimer. I went to Herkimer College and. Uh, Went in as a business administration major just because I wasn't sure what direction did I want to focus on economy. Did I want to count on business management or accounting or what did I want to do there? And I ended up coming up with a two-year degree in uh, computer programming. So <laughs> I did that. And, of course, then my daughter, you know, this was the fun part. You know, you, as, as much as TC3 has grown, the changes at Herkimer are the same way. Mm-hmm. And when I went there, it was long walks in the cold to almost all the buildings except for a couple. And... Just the way everything was, no housing on campus and everything, and I can sit there, and, I, and that was, I think they were their 10th year, around their 10th anniversary when I was graduating in 77, uh, it was. Um, and, of course, she's back there, and she just grad, she graduated there in 2019, so it was, you know, four, they're into their 50th reunion and stuff there, into their 50th year at the up to college there, and uh, totally different. She went right in there, and she took cybersecurity, so she went right in and just knew what she wanted to do. With the computers, so yeah, so I understand it does make sense. It, 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 the face of a community college has changed overall as well, too. So I mean, that's that is a big part of you know mm-hmm. of things, and, it, and it's like I said, it's what they offer now is just amazing. I'm glad you know she did her two years, and she finished off at SUNY Cortland, of course. She stayed closer to home, but uh, back to the game a little bit first. Like we said, you know, it was a, you know a good game. You know, guys were up uh, twenty to twelve after the first quarter, and then it was. 28-24, uh, like we said, that's a little kind of a slower second quarter. Then they just kind of, like you said, part of it was getting worn down, but they, uh, Genesee Community College was the opponent. They, you know, they scored, eight, outscored 18-11 in the third quarter, and then uh, just pulled away late in the fourth quarter, even though you were still within, you know, two to four points, you know, with about five minutes to go. But uh, we'll start with uh, talking, can kind of talk more about your team. Uh, one of those two that uh, really shined, had a double-double and just missed a triple-double, uh, you know, a, you know, a triple. She had a 17 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, and actually 5 steals, and so she could have had, uh, you know, a monster line score, but uh, one of those uh, young freshmen this year, uh, Moravia, is uh, Madison Kelly. Tell us a little bit about Madison. Uh, just uh, absolutely uh, fantastic uh, person. Um, uh, she was here last year during the uh, pandemic year, and uh, I actually... Uh, she had come to play basketball and we had to shut the season down, which was very disappointing for both of us. Um, we developed a, a coach player relationship that, uh, you know, puts a smile on my face. Um, and I got to spend some time with her. Uh, I, she actually is such a good athlete that, uh, she decided to play on our golf team last year after not playing golf. And, uh, I uh, had the pleasure of taking her to some of the, the tournaments last year and uh, walking the course while she played. Um, just a, a, a phenomenal all-around athlete. And uh, I uh, actually jumped on board and uh, had to coach the volleyball team this year, and she played volleyball. She's uh, she's just a fantastic all-around athlete and, uh, boy, uh, really puts the work in and uh, puts it all out there when she plays a game. And of course, one of our teammates uh, last night ended up with six points and uh, 
five rebounds in the night, uh, but our teammate, and also another freshman out of Moravia, uh, Angelina Olive, uh, Oliver. Ange is, uh, Ange is a surprise, um, a pleasant surprise. Uh, I, I met Ange in the summer. Um, we started uh, uh, getting in the gym a little bit. Um, Ange is one of those players I don't think uh, got a uh, – uh, a ton of recognition when she was in high school but boy does that young lady work her backside off when uh, when she plays um that the effort that she gives um on every play um is 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 something that uh r r is really enjoyable from a coaching perspective of course, one player uh, on the team that uh, I definitely knew got a lot of recognition is uh, from McGraw. She's, you know, t topped a thousand point mark. She had 10 points last night in her uh, collegiate debut. Uh, and I've talked to Chris. I did a podcast with Chris Wilbur, and we talked a little bit about that. We, we talked about coming to TC3 and everything. And uh, what was it you saw about her that you wanted her to be here and play for you? Well, um, you know, as far as a player, um, it's easy to see. Um, why you'd want her to play for you? Um, she's an outstanding player. She's an, uh, uh, you know, a wonderful person. Um, it's funny that uh, she started. We run basketball camps here in the summer, and she started. So I've known her for a long, uh, long time. And uh, you know, um, like I said, basketball-wise, it uh, doesn't take any expertise for me to know that she's a a, a really fine basketball player. And uh, uh, last night was just the tip of the iceberg. That uh, was kind of uh, let's get our feet a little wet, and uh, now we can go to work because uh, I see nothing but brighter, brighter things uh, on the court for her. And of course, uh, as well um, from Groton, as we said, uh, Morgan Gunn is another. Uh, I'm going with the tall players too, and folks, when I say tall, Madison and Angelina are five seven. Carissa's 5'8", and Morgan Gunn is 5'8". That's that's the height of the team this year. But uh, Morgan had nine points last night, four rebounds and stuff too. And, and you know, in the first game, you know, against Tennessee, uh, your thoughts on Morgan? I think Morgan is uh, is uh, untapped potential. Um, I think uh, she did get to do some things uh, maybe at the high school level or you know on the AAU circuit that I think she can do really well. Um, once again, it's. Uh, like I said, it's the first uh, college ball game for a lot of these folks. And uh, once uh, once Morgan gets in her mind, what I see in her, she's going to be uh, she's going to be a a, a valuable asset. And uh, once again, uh, I use the uh, the term "bright future" for uh, Carissa. Uh, there's there's some brightness there uh, in the future for Morgan. Also, um, she's. Uh, She's untapped potential. And the last of the uh, of that five seven five eight range is the uh, your player from Singapore. Uh, what about uh, Tia Holdman? Thea is uh, Thea is Thea. She's uh, got a great personality. Um, her attitude uh, is, you know, she wants to learn. Um, she comes from a background of playing where she was a netball player. Um, over in Singapore, which is uh, at first I didn't even, wasn't even sure what netball was. Um, it's close, similar, not so similar to basketball. Um, but then uh, she put a basketball in her hands and started playing, um, and uh, just uh, really took to the game. Loves the game. Um, where Thea is at right now is the talent she played against in Singapore is not quite uh, where we're at here. And uh, once she catches up to that um, and gets the fundamentals uh, corrected a little bit, she's she's going to be a fine player. And of course, so far we we got two more to hit here, and we'll, we'll start. We'll say with uh, not quite as much height, but five foot five. I'm working my way, my way down to the smallest person here. Uh, five foot uh, five, uh, the freshman. I'm going to go Adriana Royce, you know, from Newfield. Adriana, again, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned played on some fine. Uh, some fine uh, new field teams over there for uh, Coach Steinorth. Um, wasn't sure she came to play volleyball. 
Um, we talked basketball. Um, and if you watch her play, um, she's played a lot of basketball in her day. Uh, she's been well coached. Her fundamentals are sound. Um, we're working through some stiffness and some, some stuff that uh, she's dealing with. Um, so that limits her a little bit. But uh, very knowledgeable about the game. Um, always seems to be in the right spot. Um, works hard to get there. And, uh, you know, comes to practice with a smile on her face and leaves practice with a smile on her face. And, you know, I keep saying uh, I, I see good things, but uh, I do. I, I believe it in my heart that uh, this group here, even though we're uh, small in numbers and uh, lacking in height, is, is going to do some things. And last but not least on this team, uh, you will not mistake her when she's on the floor. She's all of uh, four foot ten <laughs> from Mythic High School, other freshmen. And uh, you saw her last night. At times, she was trying to box out five eleven girls in the paint, trying to get rebounds and stuff. But uh, you know, a lot of fire, a lot of hustle, and that, of course, is uh, Simone Smith. Yeah, Simone was a, a, a late addition, um, and w what a pleasant surprise! I mean, she just gets after it. Um, we went down and, and had a scrimmage earlier in the year. Uh, she was one of the leading rebounders. Um, I hadn't quite got my mind wrapped around how we were going to use her, but after last night's uh, game, um, I have some ideas of how we're going to use her. And uh, you know, it's I I try to explain to her, and I don't think she uh, is uh, a true believer in it yet. Um, some of my teams I've had in the past have been undersized, but we use the undersized as an advantage. We uh, make people put the ball on the floor where it becomes an advantage for that uh, smaller person. And uh, once she buys into that and uh, we get on the same page, she's going to – she plays a little defense. She doesn't mind boxing out. She knows why you box out. And uh, she's just got a, a, a love for the game of basketball. She reminds me – Back in the, like back in my early days when I first kind of was covering TC3 and because like I said the games were in a pit and everything and uh, she kind of reminded me I think I don't I can't remember the girl's name but I don't think she was much more than five foot two and she came out of Union Endicott that was really you know for the size you wouldn't expect to uh, be a stat producer like she was but that's I see that where Simone could someday be you know even though she's yep. like you say four ten it's. Uh, Potential is there. Yeah, the potential is definitely there, and uh, it's one of those things. After last night's ball game, um, I got uh, we we need to work harder to get her on the floor more. So, what 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 expectations do you have this year? I know uh, this is this is airing on a Friday, of course. The next game you've got actually is going to be uh, is going to be a Tuesday night game. Tom Wilk already said, I know you'll probably be here, won't you, because we're playing Herkimer. So, and I got this, and it's funny, I didn't go to a basketball game when I was went to college at Herkimer, but my daughter got involved in working with a trainer in work study, and she became the person that ran the computers most of the time, sometimes the cameras. So not with all the, the days now of live streaming stuff, she was heavily involved in that. So I actually did go up and watch the, you know, watch a few of the, the men's and women's games up at Herkimer mm -hmm. after she <laughs> well, she was a student, and uh, and I've had some good teams. So I said, yeah, we, we, you might see us both over here for that one, just because it's you know it's our our alumni against uh, you know your your team now. But uh, going forward, like I said, with Herkimer coming into town and down on the season, what are the kind of the goals you guys are setting for this season? You know, uh, we really haven't set any specific goals. Um, with the amount of time that we've had to prepare for the season, um, yes, last night's game did count in the schedule. Um, but we have some breaks coming up here. Um, and so I kind of use that as a gauge of, as, you know, almost like a scrimmage to see where we're at. As far as expectations, you know, everybody's expectation should be to win a championship. But at this point in time, um, we just need to get better every day of the week. And uh, if we keep doing that, then our expectations can rise. Um, you know, I 
truly believe we're going to win every ball game we step on the floor. Um, when you some people look out there and say, oh, you're undersized, you need some height, you need this, you need that. No, what we need is the seven players that we have right now because that's what we have and that's what we're going to go with. And if we can make them better every day and they give us, you know, 100% effort, good things will happen at some point in time. And, uh, you know, what is that they used to say? Maybe we'll shock the world. <laughs> well, like you say, Adrian, I came here to play a different sport, but it's actually now playing basketball. That kind of, kind of reminds me of the two girls. One of them is from Groton as well. And uh, I actually talked to a, oh, I want to see, Ariana, was running cross country. They both came to play so women's soccer. Mm -hmm. and, and they're both, and she's from Cincinnati, but and they're playing, you know, they end up playing, you know, ran across country this year. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, you, you, you're getting kids that are coming here making adjustments. And as we, like you said, we talked a little bit before we started doing this. Um, like we said, there was height expected this year because there's a, a girl, who, and again, that, that, that you, it'll baffle me as much as it did you. She come all the way from California, which, one thing, why do you come all the way across country and then decide, no, I'm going to set out a semester, but, uh, you know, and that's uh, a, a player at six foot four, and what a, what a different six four would make right now on the floor for this team. But uh, it's funny how you know some kids' expectations change, and they went on to something else. You know, they weren't sure they wanted to do, but they did something to stay active. And like you said, uh, but now you just turn around and like you said, you go with what we've got, you, what you've got, and it's like says um, it reminds me of some of the old Groton teams that uh, uh, I think it was Jeff uh, B. Or not Jeff, that one, Jeff B. Or Jeff Olin, I think his last name was like. I'm bad. I've been so I've met so many coaches in 35 years that I can't. But uh, he coached. Uh, the, you know, I called it the Iron Five. A grot. They, I think they had a roster of six one year and went out and scorched everyone. I think they won a sectional championship out of it. Even not only just the IAC, but a sectional championship with you know six players. So, so I mean, it's uh, that's just the mentality you take. You, you go with what you got, and like you say, probably conditioning is the most important part. It's not so much who, who can put the ball in the basket because I think pretty much everybody on this team can do that. Is can they keep the stamina up, to, you know, for that full time where they don't tire in that last five or six minutes of a close game? Yeah, and, you, you know, you talk about, and you and I talked beforehand about uh, some other players that are here on campus that have, have, have chosen not to play. Um, my personal take on that is, uh, yes, I still care about those folks. Um, but when it comes basketball season and people are putting in work the focus becomes the seven that we have there um they they deserve that attention and and that attitude from a coach um yeah you know I, I i don't spend a lot of time saying it'd be nice if we had this it'd be nice if we had that because the way i look at it it's very nice that we have those seven because uh it's a it's a it's a special group it's a special group that is getting better working together they have some skills some of them are have excellent skills some are working on you know their skills and you know wins and losses matter but uh you know being around good solid individuals is uh something that makes showing up for work every day a pleasure and I will admit, I was, you know, the crowd was good for the men's game, which I expected. Usually a men's game draw is pretty good, and it did. And uh, But then there were a few Genesee fans here, obviously. But uh, the, the specialists, there's some very vocal students that, along with parents, that came uh, and stuck around and watched the uh, women's game last night. So, I mean, that's got to be nice to have, you know, you know, fans on the other side across from you guys, you know, sitting there supporting you guys and uh, cheering you on every game. Well, I'll tell you, and, you know, we, we touched a little bit on the fact um, I coached the men's team here for years, um, had some success doing it, and, um, you know, you mentioned that I'm also the assistant athletic director, um, and people ask me, well, well, why did you switch? And... Um, you know, you mentioned the fans sticking around watching and the, and the local folks here and, you know, some vocal students. I take pride in that because one of the reasons why I switched was because I didn't believe that the women's side of things was getting the attention that it deserved from, um, you know, the fans, the student body, um, and, you know, uh, previous coaching staffs. So, uh, 
you know, I had some good assistance at the time when I was coaching the men. It would have been easy for me to say, hey, why don't you go over there and try to, you know, fix this thing. Um, now, nah, that wouldn't have been good. So we turned it over to Coach Echeverria um, and Brian Carroll on the men's side. And uh, I slid over and, uh, you know, we we built the crowds have been there. You know, when we're playing for championships, and it, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, from a coaching standpoint, I, I take pride in the fact that uh, people want to come and watch the product that we put on the floor. Great. And we should at least, you know, like even with just seven players, it's a lot of personal attention. You know, one one coach could do a lot, but, I mean, you do have an assistant, uh, uh, Joc- I guess it's Jocelyn Wright. I guess I'd get her first name right, hopefully. Yep. It, it's an assistant. So you know, there's a, there is a chance a lot of, you know, one-on-one work you can do. And it's more of that because there's not a lot of teamwork you can do. It's not like playing five on five in practice. It's you know, it's, it's more has to be a little more individualized in how you do things. But to have you know, you know, you know, like Coach Wright helping out as an assistant, it's got to be a big benefit too. Uh, it's uh, you know, this is our first year working together. Um, I've known her for a number of years. Uh, she's just been a tremendous asset so far, and uh, I, I think uh, it's just going to build from from there and uh she's she's fantastic with the players um she's very knowledgeable she was an excellent player herself and uh you know it's uh it's 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 nice to to have somebody standing next to you that you can bounce ideas off and uh one understands what you're trying to get through and two has uh the, the drive and the personality to get it across to the players. Um, just just a great asset, great asset. Like we said, next up is a, a Tuesday night game. This will, this will be flopped. This will be. The women will tip off at 5 o'clock, and the men will play at 7 o'clock against Turkmer, and then uh, there won't be a lot of more games before a little bit of a a little bit of a Thanksgiving break in there, and then just a few, really just a few more games before the actual semester break rolls around, you know, before Christmas. So, you know, it's a good time to, like you say, kind of get everything, try to get a lot of things in place, and then, you know, be ready to, you know, move again, too, especially when, you know, when the new year rolls around as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and we, we, we've we uh, talked, uh, you know, uh, about uh, our small roster size and, uh, you know, uh, lack of players. But the reason why, uh, you know, we have those breaks in the schedule is the other schools have uh, chosen not to play because of numbers or uh, didn't have uh, anybody to field the team. Uh, you know, so like I said, seven is seven, but seven is better than none. And uh, at least we're playing ball games. I told the girls the other night at practice, it's been so long since I've coached a game on this floor. I am so super excited that uh, I can't even put it into words. So, you know what? Win, lose, draw, at least we're back on the floor. And uh, we're, well, last night we threw the ball around a little bit. But, uh, (laughs) you know, we're shooting it and then we're trying to rebound it and we're uh, trying to keep them from scoring. And, uh, hey, we're back at it. That's all I can say. Yeah, I don't remember the exact number, but I think Mick McDaniel there, he did put a tweet out for the first time, I think it was 686 games or something, some astronomical number before there had been a game played on this court. So, I mean, it was uh, was a big night. And and old coach here told the story to the gals the other night at practice, and I said 926 days. Got my numbers all monkeyed up. So, Believe me, they let me know about that. You know, but, uh, <laughs> that's been a long time. No, I believe it's been 626 days. And uh, like I said, just uh, to hear that ball bouncing or a bat cracking or a goal being scored is, uh, you know, you and I know that's athletics. And it was missing there for a little while and it was different there for a little while. But uh, I think we're on the road back and. Uh, Man, it was nice to roam up and down that sideline last night. <laughs> as far as the recruiting process, I know the last couple of years has been pretty much all you got to go on video or could get out if you could see some club action. You get out and see that. Uh, now the high schools are going to you know, really be back more in full swing this year, even more than they were last year and stuff. And uh, So how, will, the, will, will the recruiting philosophy kind of change a little bit more now that it's, you know, you're going to get more high school games into along with the clubs as uh, what you'll be looking for. Yeah, I'm 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 big on getting out and seeing people play in person. Um, I travel a lot the recruiting uh, in the recruiting, um, 
pretty much make every Christmas tournament that I possibly can in the state um, around that time of year. Um, we'll get back out to the high schools. One thing it's done for me personally, um, I'm not a big uh, computer person, and uh, it taught me some things um, because that's how we had to recruit here um, the last year and a half, two years. Um, so now uh, I think we have a better under understanding, especially with Coach Wright, of how to do it um, on the computer and uh, how to reach folks. But uh, and now it's uh, opened up the opportunity for myself and uh, Coach Wright to get back out on the road and meet people in person. So uh, it, uh, you know, it's back at it again. Once again, uh, like I said about last night, getting back on the floor, hearing the balls bounce, roaming up and down the sidelines. I'm just as excited about jumping in my truck and uh, going and watching ball games. And that's the one advantage, like you say, you do have you know, once the, the semester break comes, it's right before Christmas, and it is the perfect time. All the Christmas tournaments and most of January is off the books because the kids are away and everything, too. And so it's later in January when the season starts up again really in, in earnest. So there is that time to get out and see you know, a lot of high school ball players at that time. Yep. And uh, that's a benefit of the breaking schedule. Obviously, the the non-benefit is the fact that uh, you know we send the girls home uh, for a handful of weeks and then bring them back. And uh, you know, I, <laughs> it's been my experience. I always we always try to send them home for the the Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, in all my years, the the roughest practice ever is when they come back from Thanksgiving break. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then uh, we turn right around, we play a couple of weeks, and then we send them off again for another handful of weeks um, and, uh, you know, bring them back in January. So it's uh, let's get ready, let's be ready to go, be in shape and do these things, and then send them away for a little while and bring them back and do it all over again. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. All the others that we play go through the same thing. So, uh, you know, we just – we enjoy it. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for taking time to talk to us and wish you uh, you and the uh, Lady Panthers the best of luck the rest of the season. Hey, I uh, appreciate you uh, letting us have uh, a little bit of say here. And, uh, you know, I uh, hope to see you at, uh, at the end of the year at a championship ball game. <laughs> well, that said, that'll do it for this edition of TV on the Net. Today's show brought to you by AmeriCU Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By Right Angle Creek Farm and Marathon. All natural, pasture-raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By, by the Royal Auto Group, I should go first here, on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yeaman Real Estate at the entrance to Yeaman Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C, make your wedding party or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland, founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit-in dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carryout and catering for some events. Check them out online at rileyscafe.com or call 607-849-6434. By ISF Merger Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at isofmerger.com or on their Facebook page. 
by Arnold's Flower Shop, your premier wedding florist at 19 West Main Street in Dryden. For flowers for your wedding or any occasion, call 607-844-8601 or order online at arnoldsflowershop.com. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. And by Crop Growers, LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slate at 607-591-2460 for more information. So for my guest, TC3 Women's Basketball Coach David Stevenson and yours truly, Tom Vartanian, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.